Hi, friends. Hi, Hello. Hi, 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 family. Hello, friends. It's me, Charlie Barons, um, and this is my buddy Miles Mont. Pleasure. Mont pleasure. Mont oui, pleasure. Oui, oui. We are the hosts of the Bellied Up podcast, and we are here on Who's on Third in Milwaukee. And I don't boy, know. Oh, bo- what's I don't that? know. Who's what do you on mean, third? You don't, oh, wow. Well. What? The, I forget how it goes. What is, yeah, Jake, yeah. what is it again? Who's on third? What, what's, uh, the, what is it again? <laughs> what's his name on, is on second? <laughs> oh, yeah. What's yeah. his name's on second? Who? Well, who's on third? What? Yeah. yeah, goes on so you know on so they forth. did it better the first time. We don't we don't need. I to actually just watched it. that video recently. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, Abbott and, and I Costello. couldn't even remember. Yeah. But uh, here we are. Who's on third? Vibes are good. Vibes. Hustling and bustling here on a Tuesday. Yes, yes. There is a lot of hustle. There's a lot of bustle, and there's just two fellas in between, and that's you and me, just living in the chaos here, Miles. How yes. you feeling? You doing good, pal? You uh, know, I I actually am feeling really, really good right now. I stayed in a hotel last night, and my back is feeling great. You don't hear that very often, do you? No, it's not usually really. the opposite. What right? hotel are you staying in? Shout it out! <laughs> Give them free publicity. <laughs> Hashtag not a sponsor. Oh, <laughs> can we talk about this? Can we talk about this real quick? Well, hold on. I was, okay. I splurged a little bit. Oh, and I got, you? I'm staying at the Homewood Suites. Ooh. So I got myself a suite. I know you got a kitchenette. It's got a fridge. It's got two rooms in it. Tell you what, Charlie. I thought, it, hey, I'm going to be living in comfort. I'm staying at the Homewood Suites when I get to Milwaukee, and that's where I stayed. You guys want to hear a funny story? I was at a rooftop. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a rooftop eating some din din. Uh, and what could you night. see from the rooftop? I saw there. There it was. And all it's, uh, first of all, Miles is like, I'm staying at the Homewood Suites. I'm like, where the hell is that? I don't know where that is. And then I'm sitting there at this rooftop eating dinner, and I look up and I see, sure as shoot, on the top of this building, it says Homewood Suites. I say, oh, that, that's it. And we're not talking that he's right now. He's across the highway from this, like the big overpass bridge and everything. Across the highway. That's correct. Probably a half a mile away, at least. About that. And yeah. so I took a video and I said, Miles, where are you? And I'm zooming in on the windows, which is probably creepy, you know, in <laughs> retrospect. But don't worry, you couldn't see anything. But And then I text you and said, I'm actually on the corner you just zoomed in on. I'm going to turn my flashlight on my phone because I could see that it was uh, right where like it was half of my window. Yeah. So just standing there, you couldn't see me. So what I did is I took my flashlight, turned it on. I held it above my head and I waved it like I was at a Taylor Swift concert. Yep. And, and then I just zoomed in and you can just hear me dumb giggling. You know? <laughs> there he is. Like, oh, look, I found him. And it might have been the dumbest thing we've ever done. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean <laughs> you know, let's we it, it's probably the fourth dumbest thing yeah, that we've ever done. But still, it's up there. It is up um, there. It was super fun. We though. had a great time. You know, this is what 30 plus looks like, I guess. I go to my hotel room and I turn my flashlight on and just wave it at the window. And it's the best time ever. <laughs> we could go out drinking tonight or we could just communicate via cell phone. Yeah, it's basically Ac- modern day smoke signals across it was. across the highway. Yeah. Um. Anyway, though, you were talking about sleeping there. Your back's feeling good. Huh? Well, Have you been having back issues? Well, so I think my bed at home, I need to get a new one Uh-oh. because... This is the situation. What is Again, it? Again, I turn 30 years old. Yeah. I wake up in the morning. Back hurts. Then I go about my day. I mean, you saw me playing pickleball yesterday. I was limber. You I was were feeling moving good. and grooving, man. Yeah. I was then surprised. I wake up in the morning at home. Boom. Back hurts. But I woke up this morning in a hotel and my back didn't hurt. It's usually the opposite. You know, where is it hurting on your back? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Dead uh, center. Ah, now do you have good lumbar support on all your chairs? Well, I should have known. So my uh, brother-in-law and sister-in-law, so Anne's brother and uh, his wife is a chiropractor. Yeah. And when we bought her bed, it was never good. She's like, oh, what'd you buy? And I told her and she goes, oh, and I was, you know, and and, you know, my personality, I'm like, it's going to be great. No. You don't need, you, oh, you're a chiropractor. You don't know anything about backs, is what I'm thinking in my head. Yeah, right. Sure as shit. A couple of years later. Hurts took a back. couple of years, though. Took yeah, a couple years. Hurts my back now. Okay, so what kind of mattress? I'll throw my hand up straight in the air, say I was wrong. She was right. 
I should never question the chiropractor on back issues. Do you have the back set like part of the bed can go up? And no, no, no. no. Okay. No. And so I think it's time I got to get it. So if you were looking for a new mattress, I got a good one for you. What is it? Uh, I don't know. It's one that came in a box, and that was her big. Uh, that was her big red flag. Oh, because it she, came in a box. Yep. She said, "Do not buy the the beds in a box." Oh, I I had a bed on a box for a minute. And what do you think of it? Not great on the back. I'm, yeah. I'm going to the chiropractor. So now. here we go. Have you ever been to the chiropractor? I have been to the chiropractor. What do they put you on the table and like zoo 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 and then <laughs> do they do that? <laughs> what what's your favorite thing that that they crack on you? My back. Well, what part of your back? Miles? I don't know, dude. I, I don't know what they're doing. They're putting me in weird positions and jumping on me and backs cracking. I walk out of there feeling like a million bucks. I just went there for the first time last week. And uh, the way they crack your neck is like, OK, so I now, get a little nervous about that. I but get they, so nervous. But they do it in such a way that it's so quick. You can't, you know, tense can't up or anything. It. Yeah. Classic move is all right. I'm going to do it on three. One, do it on one. Yeah, Great yeah. move. I don't, I'd never see it coming ever. Yeah. Now I'm going to start to look out for that. But I do always wonder. I'm like, man, that's how like you break someone's neck in the movies. You know, mm -hmm. they've got my life in their hands. Yeah. But it's, you know, with comes with great responsibility or great power okay. comes great responsibility. Sounds good, Uncle Ben. Appreciate yeah. that. Um, But so it's just never good when the hotel bed is better than your bed at home. No. Did you ask him downstairs what kind of bed there? I should. I should be like, what are you guys doing with those beds? You know and what? Usually they'd be like, oh, sorry. Was it not? And I'm like, no, it's great. They never hear that. All you got to do, Miles, is take off the sheets and pull the tag. Yeah, I don't think I want to see what the actual mattress looks like. Do you ever I think do it's this? A don't ask, don't tell situation with what the stains of the mattress look like. So. I just took off my pillowcase for the first time in oh, a while, God. and oh my lord, am I sweating up a storm? It looks like <laughs> I pissed on the pillow, you know? I mean, it's crazy. I'm sweating up a storm the on this pillow. The thing is, I know exactly what you're talking about, because yeah. yeah, it's like the oil of your skin goes through the pillowcase Oh and my gosh, I'm like, what? These are so, like, this pillow you, is not that did old. Did you know, my mom told me this, you're supposed to actually put a cover over your pillow, then the pillowcase, so, so you're I, supposed to have a double condom on that pillow. Yeah. <laughs> double wrap it yeah so i did that and this is what i'm telling you i pulled off is that i'm pulling off the thing that i is usually just on there over the pillowcase but it seeped through both of them oh dude. no i must be a well, sweaty that's, sleeper that's because you never wash shampoo. your hair i knew it was gonna come because you never that. shampoo your hair i knew it was gonna come back to that well man, you know what why don't you look at your pillow and you tell me what it's looking like no it's and then the we'll same go. dude it's i'm with you yeah we should we should post pictures of our pillow that's very vulnerable <sighs> Posting Oof. bare pillow pics, raw <laughs> pillow, you know? I don't think I want to. I kind of want to see yours. No. Okay. Hey, All right. Next time I'm over at your house. I, next time I'm in Next Fargo, time we cuddle at my house, you, I'll take off the pillowcase and then you can check it out. Show me just for a little bit. Yeah. 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 Um, um, so I'm in the market for a new bed. Is all I've decided this weekend. If nothing comes out of this week, it's that I need a new bed. I purchased a bed once, kind of got it through my brother. He was in the bed distribution business, so mm -hmm. I got it at a discount. It's a Tempur Pedic, I think. Is that it? No, not hey. Tempur Pedic. Hey. It's uh, oh no, no. I got what's the one where the they rotate or the the head comes up or that's some fancy ass shit. Posturpedic. Tempur-Pedic, Posturpedic. I don't know the name. Anyway, I had a story. It's just so heavy that the only person that need these beds are the people who move these beds. Yeah. You know, like it, it, me and my cousin did it. And that's honestly the reason we both have bad backs. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's like <laughs> it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Both of us have back issues from beds, but for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 100 um, percent. I heard about a bed that it will actually automatically tilt you up if it senses that you're snoring oh well that sounds like something you could use hey what why what? did you look at my gut when you said that <laughs> i did not I he, did went, not. Us. he went he went well that sounds like something you could use <laughs> i saw that i did not i didn't maybe i did but you know you've also talked to me about your snoring in the past yeah yeah i'm working Anna on it has talked to me about it yeah actually ann pulled me aside the other day and she said how do i stop the snoring i said it's very simple you take a pillow and you put it over his head 
for an extended period of time. And then, boom, you get a lot of money. I assume you have life insurance. Oh, yeah. I got uh, I got Ann set up. She's going to be all right. That's good. Well, at some point, you got to give her a break from the snoring. Otherwise... <laughs> How does he know my pattern? <laughs> How do you know my pattern? I snuck into the Homewood Suites last night. <laughs> I knew what room you were in. And, and I was like, ah, I thought I saw a shadowy figure in our bedroom last night. That was a nightmare. You're fine. That was just me. Just yeah. looking. Just hearing. That sounds like an a audio movie, nightmare recording. at Homewood Suites. Oh, that is a good one. Yeah. Maybe we should pitch it. Get a few free nights. Stay there. <laughs> yeah. 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 They got great beds. I'd be down for that. Yeah. Well, guys, I think uh, it's about that time. Just if anyone else out there is having bed issues, just know you're not alone. So I'm in the market and uh, can't wait to get home to go shopping. So, well, Charlie, should we take some callers or what? I think that's a good idea. All right, let's do it. Hello. Who do we got on the line? Hi, this is Lauren calling from North Carolina. Lauren from North Carolina. How you doing today? I'm doing great. How are y'all? We're doing good. We're bellied up to the bar, having a few beers. Charlie, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, Lauren. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling grand. So why don't you belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind. Yeah. What's cooking? I have two questions, if that's all right with you guys. Oh, but oh please. The first, que- <laughs> the first question I have is I want to know. From y'all's opinion, what makes a good passenger princess? Like, what are the snacks that they need to have on standby? What are the tunes? So I want to hear it from y'all. What makes a good <laughs> Okay, princess? so first of all, we need you for the folks listening to, I want you to give us the definition of a passenger princess for us. So in my opinion, I feel like everyone has their own definition of a passenger princess, but mine would be, so they uh, give the driver snacks if they get hungry. They adjust the AC. They adjust the radio. Um, usually the passenger princess will have a blanket, reading a book, doing some coloring. So they're just like on standby for whatever the driver needs. And they're just chilling, living their best life. They usually have a Stanley Cup and maybe a iced coffee or two. There you go. I mean, I w- so in, in my vernacular, I just call it the co-pilot. But I like passenger princess. That's a good term for it. Yeah. Anyway, any way you cut this, this is uh, this is going to be pretty. Uh, it's a very important part of the car ride scenario. You know, the proper co-pilot or passenger princess will make or break a road trip. That is for sure. So my question is, is are you the designated passenger princess in uh, when you go on road trips? Is that Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's my designation for almost the rest of my life, pretty much. So uh, me and my husband have been married for a year now, but we've been together going on six years. And, you know, he just wants to pamper me, so he never lets me drive. I like to argue and say he doesn't like my driving, hence why I will forever be a pastor princess. Um, So, yeah, that's kind of the role that I feel fulfill in our marriage. Do you want to drive? Not really. Okay. I mean, I'm okay with it. I, right. mean, there are, I mean, there are some times where I'm like, maybe like, sometimes I just want to drive to drive. But honestly, as soon as I get into the driver's seat and then he starts back from driving me, I'm like, yeah, that was a mistake. I just need to stick in my lane of a passenger princess. So you're saying he's not a very good passenger princess is what it sounds like. He is not. But he does. He is the better driver. I will admit to that. He is the better driver. Okay. Yeah. And you guys are playing uh, to your strengths. I like it. That's a good sign of a good uh, marriage right there. Well, and before Charlie and I weigh in, I want to hear what you think. What is the best? What is the top three things every passenger princess should be doing? Top three things. I would say having the proper snackage. So for me, I think that's a combination of the sweet and salty snacks. So for example, I recently went to a beach trip and I packed um, some charcuterie items and some fresh fruit. Wow. So you got to have that good combination of sweet and salty. Yeah. It sounds like some healthy options in there too. 
I mean, we're not, we're talking way more than just your standard fruit roll ups. And I was um, thinking the mixed nuts from a gas station is what I was thinking. But yeah. you're doing a whole charcuterie setup. Yeah. Well, that and you guys will appreciate that. So my husband is also a deer hunter, and he recently smoked his own deer jerky. So that was oh. definitely included on the road trip. As well. I love okay. that. I mean, this he, is he's I'm starting to salivate. Yeah. yeah. Good for good for you guys. Okay, so food is definitely your first one. What's your next one? I think having a good podcast on cue. So we always listen to y'all's podcast every time we go on a road trip. Nice. So we usually start with you guys, then we jump to the Joe Rogan one, and then we kind of bounce around uh, between different podcasts. So definitely a really good podcast. And listen to y'all, it just always brightens our day because it's just so lighthearted and it's just a really good time. Oh, well, we appreciate that. We weren't out here fishing for compliments, but we caught a couple. Look at that. Thank you. Uh, okay, so food. And then DJ, proper podcast and or music. And now the third most important, in your opinion. The third one is making sure that the driver is paying attention to the direction. Ah. Uh, there was a fun moment where, you know, we might have missed a couple turns. So while the driver is focusing on driving, that passenger princess better be prepared for when they need to relay to the driver that a turn's coming up. Yep. In 0.4 miles, you're going to want to exit here. It's mm -hmm. always good to do, right? Exactly. You got to be the designated Sheila or the GPS. Okay. I was actually just talking to my buddy about this over the weekend, and he was saying that when he's driving, his um, wife does not like to drive. So he's the guy who's always driving, and she's got directions. But they are constantly re rerouting because she's a little bit more focused on her Instagram feed than the directions. <laughs> so well, that's... she's probably not a very good passenger princess, Charlie. Probably not. Probably not. She could benefit from this whole situation. So I'm glad that that was your third. Now, another one I'd like to add that could be good on the list is I think that the, the co-pilot or the passenger princess has got to be also a little bit of a hype man or woman. Hmm. So what I mean is nothing's worse when you're driving, when you get a little road rage, someone cuts you off. You're like, what the hell is this guy doing? If the person riding with you is like, hey, calm down. You're overreacting. That's not very fun. No. They should be hyping you up a little they bit. They should be like, yeah, this guy is kind of an asshole. What's his deal? What? And then they, you can also make fun of the bumper stickers they got, you know? Yeah, oh, you yeah. got some to bond well, over. Oh, then. yeah, you got four kids on your stick fa stick figure family sticker on the back. Oh, that's really cool. Baby on board? Yeah. What? Like, oh, uh, oh, not to brag. You had sex at least one time. <laughs> that's awesome. So I think that the co-pilot's got to have a little bit of a hype man or woman in them, too. Yeah. And I also want to throw this in there. Sometimes, you know, you're you're getting a little bit a little bit lackadaisical with putting the directions in and you just need gas. OK, now it's you got to be a little cautious because if you this is a pet peeve of mine. But if you're pulling off for a gas station as advertised on the highway and then you get onto the exit ramp after you've committed to this. And then it shows you the sign for that gas station. But really, in the small, fine print, it says three and a half miles to the left. I did not get off the highway for a three and a half mile yep. jaunt. Yeah. You know, it's just knowing uh, if you're not sure how far away the gas station is, if you can't see it off of the uh, highway, I don't mess with it because you could be taking a, a long detour. Yes. Yeah. Because it could be three and a half miles through town, which is 30 miles an hour or something. And it could be a whole extra 20 minutes. And sometimes they get you in a speed trap, too. And then now you got a ticket on your hands. <laughs> yeah. You know, these are they should actually do a law outlawing those suckers. Yeah. Another good thing I think that should happen with the co-pilot or the passenger princess should be knowing when to uh, lean back in your seat. Right. So you're coming to a four way stop or just a stop sign in general. And if the passenger is leaning forward, looking at something and you can't see out the window, that's a pet peeve of mine. You uh. know, if, hey, come to a four way stop. Boom. Put your head against the headrest so you can see all angles. And then even also maybe give a you're good on the right is uh. also a good way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 
uh, would you say that you have that technique down or is that something you're still working on? I'm going to let my husband answer this one. He's right here next to me playing some PlayStation. So, Sean, what do you think about that? Yeah, no, you're freaking terrible about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you looking at me? No. No way. Yeah. Wow. No, I'm not trying to stare dreamily into your eyes. I'm trying to see if someone's going to T-bone us or not, right? Exactly. Now, um, it's Sean, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so Sean, yep. uh, why don't you uh, ever let her drive? What's what's going on there? Oh, it's just scary, man. <laughs> and, uh, well, it's okay, it's, so I don't like. <laughs> so, I mean, has there now? Here's the question, though: Have you ever been in a scenario where she was driving and something bad happened to lead you to have evidence that she may not be as good a driver as you, or is it all in your head? Definitely not all in my head. You know, do you have an driving, example? I mean, I've, you know, the occasional tailgating, that kind of stuff. I think I hit a curb the other day. Yeah, well, that's a given. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you guys are on the same page. <laughs> this isn't a control issue, Sean. Do you let anybody else drive? Yeah, my friend, parents, brother. Not my car, but like I'll ride with people. Okay. Nice. But, so no one else is driving your car. Is that basically a rule of thumb? Yeah. That would just be selfish. Another question I got for you guys is what do you do for a living? Because it is Tuesday afternoon and you're playing PlayStation and you guys are also calling into the podcast. Wondering what kind of gigs you guys got going on. So for my work, I work fully from home and I log on really early in the morning because I'm fully remote. So I work hours from 6 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. So that way I have my afternoon free in the summer. Uh, so, yeah, that's my current gig. I like it. And, Sean, how's PlayStation coming along? Oh, it's great, man. Uh, I just got home from work not too long ago. So I'm just what are you doing? What time is it? After 3.40. Oh, wait, they're an hour YouTube. ahead. They're an hour ahead. What do you do, Sean? Uh, I work for the, the city where we live. Okay. Law enforcement. Got it. So listen, Sean, uh, we got the yeah. call in asking what can make um, your wife a better passenger princess. Um, do you have anything that you'd like to throw out there that might add to the whole deal? Something you've always wished she did, but didn't do. <laughs> Keep um, it PG, Sean. Jeez you know, Louise. Yeah. What was that little chuckle? I heard that there. chuckle. Oh. <laughs> We've been together, what, six years, married for just over one. She's still a little rusty on getting the, the food what? prepared, ready. for Whoa. Uh, no, no. Shark- just listen, Lord. Charcuterie at the Whenever beach. Whenever we're driving, we get food, and I got to eat. But you know how, like, it can be kind of a hassle, especially if you're driving by yourself, open it up like a chicken biscuit or something like that from Bojangles or Chick-fil-A. Yeah. No, it's just the job of the passenger princess. Open it up, get it ready so that the driver doesn't have to do that. That way you're not driving with your knees trying to open up that chicken sandwich. Am I right? Well, exactly. well I got another question. She was bragging <laughs> about the charcuterie, the, the venison jerky, the whole thing. Sounds like all you want is some Bojangles or some Chick-fil-A. Is that it? Is there a question on maybe not packing the snacks you want, more so the snacks she wants you to eat? Oh, no. I mean, I'm the one that makes the deer jerky. Yeah, I suppose. But, but uh, no, I mean, like, I like all that food. Just sometimes it can be, uh, like, if we get fast food and we're driving, he just goes, here's your chicken sandwich. Just, like, throws it in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, he, next, you want her to fan you while you're driving as well? Yeah, what's or going what? on? Yeah, geez. What if you're doing it hey, by yourself? We you got gotta a, open we got it a by passenger yourself. princess and a driving princess, is Look what it sounds that. like a little bit. We've uncovered I mean, the truth. There is. <laughs> Lauren, what do you think of that? Do you think he's a little bit of a driver princess sometimes, or my off base i would i would say that he is but as long as he acknowledge acknowledges it i'm okay with that and i can i can meet him halfway and say i can do a better job about opening the sandwich so that way he doesn't fumble around trying to open it so i can compromise and agree lauren what's your biggest critique of sean's driving if you had to pick one 
Oh, man. <laughs> Biggest critique. See, I don't want to be cliche and say I don't have any because he's such a good driver and he keeps me safe to drive together. I don't want to be that, like, cliche and just that type of wife. But um, probably maybe the road rage thing. But you guys... Yeah, road rage. Okay, the fact that you said... <laughs> that sounds just like a lot of really dumb people. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like someone who's got massive road rage would say yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like oh. you're a little bit in denial. I think Sean's thinking that denial is just a river in Africa. You know, <sighs> I haven't taken that first step. All right, I'm gonna be honest though. It sounds like you guys got a pretty good relationship. You both admit to some things, and uh, you're okay with it. And everyone knows their roles. I think that uh, that sounds like a pretty healthy thing you guys got going on. Yeah, I'd say so too. Do you guys ever? Yeah, we do. Okay. Do you? Uh, Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna ask. I have my husband here, so I think he wants to ask the truck question with a pontoon. Do you want to ask that? Oh yeah. Now I'm right. Are you sure? Uh, don't be Come shy, on, Sean. Well, Sean. We're Come sitting on. here. He's like, Jeez. I got to get back to my Call of Duty <laughs> game, honey. I can't be asking this question right now. No, not that. No. My parents are fixing to get a pontoon boat in the next couple of years, and I'm looking at getting a truck. Would you guys recommend? I'm going with the Ford F-150, but I'm trying to figure out if I want to get a V8 or the, the EcoBoost. Well, I know some people have had the EcoBoost that haul fifth wheels. And they swear by them. They said they actually can pull pretty well. They drive pretty fast. Yeah, I got an EcoBoost myself, and I have no problem. Uh, I haven't pulled a boat yet. I don't own a boat. But, you know, side by side on the trailer, other trailers as well. I got an enclosed one, helping people move couches and stuff. I got no problems with it at all. But the question is, is it's what's in your heart. You know, if you're being drawn to that V8, I think you just got to go for it. But. I think that you bring up a good point. Yeah, I think you see a V8 on the road. You kind of start asking, oh, you know, uh, is that totally necessary? What's he hiding? You know, <laughs> what's he what's he overcompensating for? And the other thing is the road rage. Uh, do you, the road rage. Exactly. Do you have yourself a truck right now? Unfortunately not. No. OK, well, I do have to warn you, as soon as you make that purchase and dive into truck land, you just become the guy everybody calls when they need a couch move. So I hope your back is in good condition before you get yourself that truck, because I don't know how it is down there in the south. But up here, it's hard for us to say no to things like that. Well, thankfully, pretty much everyone that I'm friends with already has truck. OK, I'm kind of the odd man out. Okay. okay. Well, that's been, had to have been great for you. No one gives you a call. I call everyone else. That's smart. Yeah. But now it's time to pay the piper. Yeah. Just fair warning. So what's with the pontoon though? Are you thinking you're going to pull it with the pontoon? Well, my parents thing was we get the pontoon boat because my wife really wants a boat and then they want a truck. So they're saying we get the pontoon, you get the truck. That way if they need to tow it somewhere, then They'll have us there. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I mean, this your guys' family seems very pleasant and very compromisable, and it seems like I got a good thing going. Yeah. I mean, you got a whole... Yeah. You guys are just a year into this marriage, and you got a lifetime of charcuterie and fruit on the beach and, you know, just pleasant car rides ahead, as near as I can tell. Oh. Thanks for answering both of our questions, and, yeah, we love listening to the show. Well, thank you for coming on, and uh, you guys uh, keep her moving out there on the road, and watch out for deer in that thank eco boost. Hey, hey, and and right, now, they're going to be listening to this episode in the car at some point. Hey, honey, why don't you pass me some jerky over here? Make sure it's out of the package, though. Otherwise, that's not going to be a good yep, thing. Yep, <laughs> we we all learned a little something today. I think. So when that's you listen it. to this, when it comes out, you got to make sure you got jerky on hand. Yep. So. Jerky on hand and out of the wrapping. All right. And the chicken sandwiches. All right. We'll send you some. All right. We appreciate <laughs> we'll that. Some. We do love it. All right, guys. We'll talk soon, okay? All right. Say hi to your folks for us. All right. Yep. We'll We're do. Good. Watch for deer. Bye-bye now. Oh, that was really I nice. think she just called in to brag about <laughs> that she's a great passenger princess. She's kind of what. I think she did. I think she was just trying to be like, hey, this is what everyone should do. I don't think she was even asking for advice, which I can appreciate. Sounds but like she, they got a great thing going. I wish that Anne would take a few pages out of those books. 
Uh, does Ann ever drive? When well, you guys she go just got distances? a she's got a little bit bigger of a noggin, and so it's as you could tell the whole coming to a four way stop and her can't see out the the passenger window to see if anyone's coming is my biggest gripe. So, yeah. well, <clears throat> you did, I don't think he answered the question. Does she get to drive? Yeah, she drives. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and do you prefer when she drives or do you prefer to I'm drive? I'm pretty 50-50. Are you? Yeah. I uh, like to be know. a passenger princess okay, once in a while. Okay, when you're a passenger princess, I guarantee you, you're on the freaking phone not paying any attention. Well, it's more so I'm doing like Sean is doing. I'm, hey, whoa, 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 watch out for that. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that was like one time she was back. Like we got only just backing out of the driveway and a car was coming. And she wasn't looking. I was like, there's a car coming. Hold on. She's like, really? We're not even on the driveway yet. <laughs> and you're already telling me how to drive. So I'm working on it, though. Okay. Yeah. It's Next a- time, I'll just let her back into this oncoming car. Yeah. That'll be good for the back. Yeah. Be great. I'm sure so. you've never accidentally almost backed into a car in your life. I've never backed into it. I've rear-ended someone okay. before, though. So, But that was that many was years moons ago. ago. Yeah. 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 All right. Should we do our next caller? Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, hey, Pooch. Welcome. Is that a dog? What the hell's going on there? Thank you. Are you talking to me, boys? I was talking to you. It sounded like you were uh, either banging something or there was a dog barking. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'm on job side. I'm walking outside now. Oh, no worries. That's what I figured. What's uh, What's your name? Andrew. Andrew, where are you from? I'm in California. I'm currently in Marine Del Rey. Oh, nice. Uh, but I live just north of L.A. Okay. You're on yeah. a job site down there, Marine Del Rey. How hot is it down there now? 67 degrees, boys. Oh, Beautiful. Nice and cool. Got that marine layer in Marina Del Rey. It hasn't uh, quite burnt off yet by the best. sun. Good for you. So what what Thank belly you. up to the bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind. So about I want to say three years ago I had a little project made at a desk, had some plywood, and there was a piece of plywood about two foot by five foot ish that was just beautiful. I mean it was perfect. And I've been saving it. It's been in the garage, it's been behind like the uh uh, the brooms and where the wife leaves the uh, vacuum cleaner. We have oh, to yeah. move it like every two months. Boys, I fucking used it. Yes. <laughs> he finally used yeah. it. Yeah. He, he kept it there. Yeah. You, had, you had a lot of opportunities to throw it out, to clear out space, to clear the clutter. A lot of spring cleanings came and went. But you, sir, you held on like a true American. Good for you. Yeah. Throughout all doubt. Thank you. Right? Yeah. There becomes Thank a you. moment in the dark place that you go where you look at that piece of wood and you go, <sighs> do I need it? Yeah. Do I want it? All of that. And you persevered through. And yeah. Here we are today. You got through the whole Marie Kondo. Uh, if it doesn't serve you or whatever, let it go. You said, hell no. I'm holding on to this. Good for you. You went against the grain. Now, what did Quite you later, Yeah, nice pun. Against the, you yeah, like that against yeah. the grain? That no, was nice. Yeah. So tell us what I mean. This is one phenomenal news i yeah. mean I, we couldn't be more excited no, for you. i'm thrilled what did you end up using it for <laughs> that's not too exciting i had to build a little platform in the attic i was doing some plumbing nothing too crazy but oh no I that, used it, boys. that's great you used it now tell us about this platform and, and maybe someone else needs to do a little plumbing in the attic too let them know uh how they can use their piece of plywood all I did was build a little section so I can comfortably get on my knees and uh, do about an hour of soldering because I'm not a very good plumber. Uh-huh. So I just built a little box in the attic so I can just get cozy up there. That's all. I you use it that. for a nice I working could slide path. It around and, yeah, I could slide it around so my knees aren't on the joists and not hurting myself. My knees are going bad. So Now, yeah. what it sounds like, though, is that this two by five piece of plywood is going to be the gift that keeps on giving because it sounds like you didn't even fasten it to anything. Sounds like you're going to be able to pull that out of the attic and store it back in the garage for the next time you may need that piece of wood. 
I think you just figured something out. I think you just cracked the code, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you get crap from your buddies who come over or maybe your wife or whoever about why don't you get rid of that thing, you can tell them about the time you had to do some soldering for some plumbing and your bad knees and laying it on the joist. <laughs> You know, there, there you got it. I was hoping that maybe my boy, when he goes in the attic one day, when he has the house, he'll he'll realize what a genius his old man is. Oh, yeah. yeah. It hey, can son. Live in lore. Yeah. When he when he finally uh, passes the house down, he's not going to give him the keys. He's going to give him this piece of plywood and say, <laughs> "This is the working pad plywood right here." I see him when he's selling the oh, house. Yeah. Say, hey, before I give you the keys. Follow me. You take him up to the IQC. That, it's like in Pulp Fiction when he's talking about the watch being shoved up his ass or whatever. He's like, you look at this piece of plywood. That piece of plywood was with me for damn near two years. And everyone said, you're crazy. Let it go. But I said, no, it won't go to the landfill. I might send the realtor up there. I might send the realtor up there to take a picture of it. To oh, it yeah. Time, huh? Yeah. That yeah. should be the only picture of your house when you try and yeah. sell it. In, in the details, it's like it's a four bedroom, th- three bath, this much square footage. And there's also a very, very good working pad in the attic <laughs> for a piece of plywood. <laughs> it's priced at like $2 million right. dollars over like, <laughs> like what it should be because of that. Can I? Uh, it's James, right? That's your name? Andrew. It's Andrew. Why the <laughs> hell did I think it was James? <laughs> oh, what? oh, it says James Andrew on the uh, thing. Charlie's Our had some screen. tequila, so I did. He I, forgets yeah, names when he's drinking Lucky. tequila. Yeah. yeah. Now, Andrew, um, it, you seem like a, a fellow who's had a, quite a few pieces of uh, plywood hanging around or other scrap wood. Um, can you give us uh, some tips on making new things from scrap wood like if you have a piece of scrap wood what are the tips on making something beautiful Ooh, that's a good question probably youtube youtube i'm okay. so sorry boys no I, it's- yeah <laughs> i mean there's so many youtube videos about that i don't make stuff out of scrap that i'm going to uh put in my office or in my house i like to make a little bit of furniture mm-hmm What's the craziest so thing you've ever... Nice, good wood. Yep, good wood. What is yeah, the like craziest thing you've ever made out of uh, scrap wood, though? Scrap wood? Yeah. Probably a platform in my attic. <laughs> <laughs> Follow-up uh, question. You know, you may not have built anything out of scrap wood, but I know you got some sort of inventory in that garage. I know that that piece of plywood's not the only thing you got hanging around. What else do you got in your inventory in the garage you may use at some point? Okay, so that's a great question. I do have some galvanized pipe that's threaded on the ends that we can use to make shelves out of the little, uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about. I have some of those I've saved. Very hip and Uh, trendy these days. Yeah, some aircraft cable with some nice ends on them. Looks real nice. What are you going to do with that? Uh... I don't know yet. We'll find out someday. I'll call you back when I do. Yeah. You He's got a couple years to figure it out. Got, yeah. 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 There's no pressure anymore. Yeah, you know what? Time. You just built yourself like a, a standard, you know, for how long some can hang around without having to use it. You know, it, it's got to be at least two years because the idea really needs to ferment in your mind, you know, and uh, and th- there's no rushing this scrap wood process. And Charlie, I think we just unlocked a new version of buy seller trade. Oh. In that you also have some bargaining power of some extra stuff laying around, where maybe you don't need that galvanized pipe right now. You need something else, and your buddy's got something in his garage. You can trade him the galvanized pipe for whatever you need in his garage. hundred percent. Yeah. Do you have anything in your garage? Do you have anything in your garage that you're looking to uh, trade right now? I do. What do you have? I've got a lot of good. Gu- I've got some guitar pedals. Oh, guitar <laughs> pedals. How about that? What kind of guitar pedals are we talking? You name it. I got them. I've got tons of fuzz pedals. I went through a fuzz phase. Yeah. Ah. Oh, that's and a uh, tons of fuzz pedals. Yeah, I know. I've got too many of them. Yeah. So it always happens to, to me every time I go pedal. through my fuzz paddle phase. It's I can tell <laughs> that you've gone through that the way you called it a paddle. <laughs> they call it a paddle. Yeah, fuzz paddle I've that's... had a little tequila. 
So uh, what would you want to trade these uh, pedals for? It's mm, a great question. Mm, I'd trade them for some leather making tools Ooh. or some good pieces of leather. Nice. Okay. Nice little piece of Sounds hide. like he's trying to put another feather in his cap of being a leatherman as yeah. well, not just a... Uh, uh, plywood uh, craftsman. No, no. Were you a uh, musician in a former life there, Andrew? A little bit. Yeah? Did you play some gigs out there Not in quite, California? No, no, no gigs or anything. Just for fun. Okay. Just for fun. That's good. Well, this has been, this is really just an exciting phone call. We're really happy to hear. It's not every day you find <laughs> you someone so who actually uses the piece of wood that they got in their garage. No, hell no. I know. Um, I'm blessed. Yeah. I I tell you what, you know, I got a, a, a piece of birch, uh, birch wood in, in my um, garage that I've been, you know, because birch is one of those things you can. A lot of people burn it. You know, it's nice, nice watching a piece of birch burn. Yeah. But, you know, a nice piece of birch also can be very decorative. You know, the oh, hipsters yeah. love that. Oh, stuff. my God. They get off on birch. Yeah, I know. Sure. I don't yeah. know what it is about hipsters. Oh, they and love that birch. birch yeah. But, man, you see their birch. What about start- pairing it with a little galvanized pipe? That oh, might look oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> that could be cool. Maybe. How much should- do you think? Uh, how much do you think a sheet of birch is right now? <laughs> I mean, birch is skyrocketed. The price of birch, you know. Yes, but I'll no tell you, I t- no, I tell you what. Here, no, a sheet of birch. I mean, come on, that's one thing. But uh, I'm talking about people want birch raw these days. You know, they they don't want it milled or anything like that. They they want that that bark. That yeah. it's really it's that birch bark. It's all about the want. bark. Yeah, it's all bark, no bite. All birch With bark, birch, no you know? bite. Yeah, that's it. Right now, I got a. So, we did a little accent wall at my house, you know, with some uh, like trim board on the sheetrock. You know oh, what I'm talking yeah, about, yeah, yeah. You know, like okay. every millennial home has. Yeah. Um, and so, I got a little extra trim wood left in my garage. I can't wait to find out what I use it for in the future. It's a really exciting time. It for is me, exciting. Really, yeah. That's like what keeps you through the hard times is what are you going to use your scrap wood for? You know, and just that mental exercise, all the all the a whole world of possibilities with that little piece of this and that. Andrew, you we re- made me feel so good. No, you made us feel good. I mean, thank you for calling in today. You've you've done um, you've done a public service. I want to let you know that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah Very you're, good. Thank you're really you. doing God's work. You and, are. Uh, we appreciate you calling in, man. And uh this is good. Hopefully, you can find someone to trade those uh, fuzz paddles for. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Well, watch out for dear Andrew. We appreciate you calling in now. All right. Love you guys. Love, Love you too. back. Bye bye. What a good, good guy. <laughs> Hell yeah. I want him to maybe rummage through my garage a little bit, see if we can drum up something to work on together. He seems like a guy I'd want to drink beers with in the garage. Yeah. You know Definitely. what I mean? Definitely. It just, it just seemed like, you know, no, it, oh, yeah, a trim piece. What if we did this with it? Yeah. And then we'd have a couple more beers. Well, maybe not today, but let's try again next week. And then we drink more beers together and brainstorm. And that goes on for a couple of years. And next thing you know, you think that you're trying to do a DIY project, but really you got a DIY friend. And that's and what then, it's really about, yeah, Charlie. That's what it was really about. Yeah. And while you were saying that, Miles, I, I thought of something you could do with that trim. What do you think? How much foot of trim you got? I think it's like a six foot piece. Six foot, that could be enough. You got the numbers on your house yet? <laughs> yeah, I do, actually. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, that's a... Not a... I mean, as long as you don't have a lot of twos in it, you know, if you got like... Nope, no twos in mine. That's good. So uh, ones, fives, fives a little tough. Yeah, four is a good one. Luckily, my address is just one eleven, so it's gonna work out great. One eleven, you could have, you could have just, we could have got that done lickety split. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's just a few cuts with the old, uh, the old saw there. Yeah, the old miter. Well, hopefully. uh, Hopefully we get another caller as pleasant as that. that yeah, awesome. let's take another. Charlie, Miles. we're hot. We're hot in uh, wedding season right now. Yeah. You want to know what the best gift you can give a wedding couple? 
What's that? A nice old bottle of tippy cow. Oh, man. And a brand new bed. That's true. I mean, that's an expensive gift. Yeah, I think is. you just go with the tippy cow. It's honestly. affordable. It tastes good. It's a delicious, creamy tree you can have the next day after your wedding when you're feeling a little hungover to get you back to zero. And if your bed is bad, <laughs> tippy cow, tippy cow helps makes you sleep better. Loosen that back up a little bit. Something always... about what those cows put in the milk. Oh my gosh! Mm. You know, my back's already starting to feel better. I don't know about you. A little sip, mm. Mm. lumbar sip sport, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Lumbar support, lumbar sip. There's something there. We'll so workshop that. if you're wondering what you should get a couple for their wedding gift, you got to just go to the store, get some tippy cow. You don't even got to wrap it. They don't even they should just know that's what they got. Yeah. Just, just put a little bow on the front and uh, you're going to be uh, wrap it. It's already wrapped. Look at how beautiful this that is. is true. You and, couldn't get any better. Wrapping and paper all I would that. say is you're going to get a pretty nice thank you note after mm-hmm. that gift mm-hmm. from the wedding. They're so gonna be, they're going to tip their hat to guys, you for getting them a tippy cow. And we're t- going to tip it on back to be cow. We love it. Hello. Who are we talking to? Hello, this is Logan. How are you guys? Doing good, Logan. Where are you at? I am in western Nebraska. Western Nebraska. What's uh, Yeah, how are you guys? Today? What's the topography like out there today? Uh pretty flat. Pretty yes, flat. Very very flat and windy. There Sounds you like you're in North Dakota, so I know that all too well, huh? <laughs> Living on the moon. <laughs> What's on yeah, your mind? It's about 112. Yeah. Well, hey, I was calling in because at the end of the month, I have to officiate my brother's wedding. And I was needing some tips and tricks for how to officiate a wedding. Okay. All right. You called the right place. Yeah. Charlie's had at least one <laughs> wedding, so he you knows know what, all about Miles, it. Yes, Every I've heard. time we talk about a wedding, you don't need to bring up the fact. <laughs> I didn't say the D word. I just said wedding. Yeah, we all know what you meant. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, well all let's right. hope this one ends better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So t- you, uh, what, uh, remind me again, what's the deal? You're officiating? Is that the yep, deal? his brother's uh, wedding. Your brother's wedding. Yeah. Oh, that's some pressure. Why did they pick you? What I mean, what? no clue. No clue. So no clue. time out. Are you I, in the I like? Think- are you in the wedding party as well, or because? Or well, how's that working? It's, I get all the perks of a groomsman just with more talking. More talking, yeah. but you don't have to rent a suit. So that's a big win right there. Oh, no. No, I had to buy one. Oh, no. Yeah, Why would... So it sounds like he's going to walk up there like a groomsman and then just be the officiant is what oh, it sounds like. Is see, that accurate? Yeah. You're pulling double duty? I think so. I don't. I think so. Man of many traits, you could say. I like that. Well, um, well, first of all, uh, when it comes to officiating, I had my sister officiate my wedding, so this actually hits pretty close to home. She did a great job. She by did the a way. great job. She had one blemish, and that will be the. Uh, and she knows we've me and her have talked about it. Yeah. Um, so this is maybe a, a good uh, reminder for you. And she forgot to tell everyone to sit down when she started. The that thing. is true. Oh. <laughs> you were there. I you was there. That? I was sitting there standing up. I was like, geez, Louise, I wasn't expecting. I mean, this, and you got you a know? bad back. So it's like, geez, well, you, when are we going to sit down? And my know? back's <laughs> fine, Miles. OK, it's it's coming around. OK, but honestly, we were stamped for quite a bit. It was I was looking back to see if anyone back there was sitting. Yep. And she eventually caught herself, though, and made light of the moment. And know what she told me later? She what? said, I even wrote in all caps with a pen on something she printed out, remind everyone to sit down, and she just blanked it. Just, just, she so, was so excited to marry her brother off. Yeah, so that's number one. Make sure you're telling everyone to sit down because that can turn a crowd on you pretty fast. 100%. If they got to stand for too long. Um, I think another one. Okay. Yep, and I think another one is is do something to really cut the tension right away. Yeah. Because weddings can get a little bit serious, right? It's like, oh, my God, this is the biggest day of my life, this and that. If you can lead off with something that's appropriate, but that also cuts the tension a little bit, kind of disarms everyone that's at the wedding, I think that could be a good technique to just have everyone relax a little bit. So 
<laughs> so my brother told me I'm limited to two jokes, which no. I think is funny that he thinks I'll hold myself to that. But <laughs> yeah. here, so here's the plot twist. Here's the plot twist. I allegedly asked this girl out on the bus when I was in junior high. Okay. All right. so, That's a great way to cut so the tension. I'm, I'm thinking the opening line would be like, hey, girl, I knew you'd find a way to get me at the altar on your wedding day. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'd go uh, like no, that. I, I like it. I, like I it. was thinking maybe more like, well, I thought that I'd be standing in a different spot today. Mm. But, you know, then it's so less like calling your 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 brother's wife girl in front of everyone. I don't know. Is it common? <laughs> Let me well, ask. I would put her name. Okay. There you go. There you go. Is it common? It would be now? awkward if you were like, hey, sweet baby cheeks. I thought that I'd be standing here with you. Don't do that. Yeah. That's a no-go right okay. there. Okay. Um, is it common? So you couldn't get first. Yeah. Is it common knowledge that you um, asked her out on the bus? Does everybody at the wedding know that? It's common knowledge amongst my family. And again, this is alleged. She put it in her diary. I don't recall. Oh. I mean, back then I was big game left and right. So she was probably just one of the few that day that got asked out okay. by me. Okay. But, you know. <laughs> Here's so, how you open up. You so got to get not confirmed. Yeah, you got to get your hands on that diary. By the way, yeah, and you need to <laughs> whip that thing out without her knowing and read word for word what's in the diary. That'll break the that's tension. That's actually just say before we start today, I'd like to read a passage from the bride's diary, <laughs> and then <laughs> say, say the date and the uh, and the whole deal. And then after that, then your joke's going to land oh, very and hard. Then, oh, this is great. So do that and then go, I know that you're sad that it didn't work out between us, but you can say, but you dodged a bullet because you ended up with my brother who's a better man than me. <laughs> oh, That's a great way to say oh, it. Oh, yeah. That'll be I nice. I feel like lying during a wedding isn't the way to go. You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you don't want to start. I feel off like we need to be open track. and honest. Yeah, <laughs> even better. I mean, you can even say that. You can say, no, I, wa I was going to come up here and say, you know, that you ended up with the better man, but I don't want to start this marriage off with a lie. Yeah, and then, that's a good one. Yeah, too. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. For this, for this specific second, reason, though. I don't keep a diary. I don't want anyone knowing my thoughts <laughs> from the past. That's you a know. shame, Miles. You, di you diary? You oh, I've got, I've got, yeah, since I was a kid, I've got a whole, uh, whole Books well, that, of them. Well, that's Stacks because he thinks he's going to publish an autobiography based off his diaries. That's what that's about. Hey, you never know. It's going to be another thousand page <laughs> book that he puts out. <laughs> that last one was only 200 I heard pages. I heard it's a good toilet read, though. <laughs> it's good. It is. Yeah, a good, really hey, is. that's. <laughs> Please, that's the best compliment I could get on that book, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that and it props up the I'm, coffee table. One of those two. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. 200 pages, though. That's going to be quite the prop. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you're on the toilet for 30 minutes a pop, you'll get through that thing within a few years. Maybe that's why you got back issues. Yeah. You're probably sitting on there for 30 minutes. <laughs> There's not enough lumbar support on the crapper. Do your toilets have the padded seats, Miles? <laughs> no, that would oh. be insane. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I mean, but also maybe I'll try it. Oh, but yeah. pun. Nice. Ah, nice. Uh -huh. so, I, wanna... I mean, when you're on there for that long, you just Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was saying when you're on there for that long, you just turn around, sip your coffee, and use the, the tank as your reading mode. Oh, yeah. you oh, got to yeah. go reverse cowboy on yeah, that Yeah, a little A.C. Slater <laughs> on the... Uh, yeah, that's AC actually Slater a great on move. the toilet. That's pretty great. So I want you to talk yeah. us through a little bit of what your plan is for this uh, officiating. How's it going to start? What's the well, middle? How's it going to end? What are you thinking? Well, my brother called me last night and said, hey, I need a script by this weekend, which, I mean, I don't think he should be able to see the script. It's kind of like one of those things when you give a graduation speech, you give the principal one that's okay, and they approve it, and then you whip out a new one. I right? was going to say, you're so just giving them the outline, right? You guys got to give them an outline. He, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't get the zingers in there. He, he's got to wait for the show for that one. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I'm thinking, walk into my theme song party in the USA uh, and then bring everybody else in, you know, just 
start off with a couple one-liners to keep Whoa. everything nice and light. Hang on, you're and gonna, then yeah, sorry, yeah, you're, you gotta back, back it up. Back you can't up just train. glaze over you're that. Back up the you train. actually are you are walk in to party in the USA. The wedding with a Miley freaking Cyrus song. Well, I mean, would you prefer like, uh, probably like Luke Combs, Long Neck Guys, Full Beer, Never Broke My Heart? I can do that. <laughs> I'm open to ideas. I don't think you get a song as the officiator <laughs> yeah, of a wedding. <laughs> I, I I mean well, I, I'm kind of in charge of running it, so I think I can put one in. Yeah, I, I you could. can. Now, it's question: like, Is this going to be straight from Spotify, or is this like a piano version of Party in the USA? That'd be awesome. That would I, be I awesome. recant my previous hey, statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, party. I think in the party USA. or a piano version with me karaoke while I walk up the aisle. Okay. Oh boy. Oh, wow. Oh boy. Um, I think that um, your brother is absolutely okay. Okay with asking for the full speech. <laughs> now that I know you a little bit more, I don't blame your brother. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Well, we've all been confused since day one why he asked me to officiate. But I what? think so. I went to seminary for a couple months to be a Catholic priest. Oh so boy! I'm, I don't know if he thinks I went over that section when I was in seminary, but we didn't get there in the first couple months. Who's What's the- that say about your brother that you're the closest thing you can find to a, a priestly man? It's just someone who went to seminary for a couple months. Yeah. That's the criteria. <laughs> yeah, we've had family tell me that some things I have to include in the wedding and everything. Apparently. People think I'm open to suggestions, and <laughs> I, I don't think I am. Yeah, you're like, when did I ever say that this was a uh, speech by a group of people? This is my speech, right? This is your exactly. time. Exactly. He would ask them to officiate. Who's the best yeah, man? That's what I'm saying. Who's the best man? One of my other brothers. Oh, oh that's got a wow. sting. Now, do you think? Oh, that's got to sting. Do you think you were the rightful best man? And do you think they were giving you the officiating to kind of lessen the sting of not being uh, called into best man duties? Well, what he told me was if they would have got married in a church, I would have been best man. But he'd rather my other brother be best man and me officiate. So I think it was a little like. Hey, came with an explanation too low. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that he's just doing straight politics. on Yeah. You. That was, they discussed that. They're like, how do we let him down easy? Ah, let's just let him be the officiant. You know? Yeah. I mean, Hey, step yeah, above that. Usher. Big step above. Yeah, Usher. That's, what I, that's what I was saying. My sister made Usher me don't Usher. get their own line. That's true. Yeah. No. Well, and, I and you, you No, go ahead. You weren't mad about that at all, were you? My sister making me usher. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's basically like hiring me without paying me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, hey, can you hand out? And then I got yelled at by the priest for not doing it good enough. <laughs> so, you know, that's how that goes. <laughs> Listen, I, I feel like you've been yelled at priest by so many times. Back oh, when yeah. you were an altar boy, I'm oh, sure you didn't do anything hey, right. And yeah. it was just. I would bring in the book when they want me to ring the bells. It was a mess. It was uh, the priest had to go to confession. I wasn't, wasn't going to go there. The priest had to go to confession after every single mass that Charlie was the <laughs> was the altar boy at because he's <laughs> just mumbling things under his breath that he had to confess later. Yeah. If you're a priest, can you confess to the mirror? I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of how the Lutherans, uh, do it, you know. Yeah, it's a good way. I wasn't going to go to the altar server joke, but thank you for taking that one, Miles. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he found a PG one. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, we're we're uh, there we're no extracurriculars with Charlie as the altar boy. Let's no, 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 no. Okay, good, good. Listen, we're it's not like the duck walk at the doctor's office. Okay, all right, that's all right, the other all podcast. Right. All right. See. This is family, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Podcast. It's a family podcast <laughs> that we occasionally take My shots. Bad. Leave during. that joke out of your officiant talk. Yeah, here, okay? yeah. <laughs> you know, go, why don't you go back to the seminary for a little bit? All right. See what happens. Um, uh, hey, so, um, I'm, I'm so sorry. how many jokes do you have? Can you give us some of your best singers? Well, after that one didn't land too well, I'm not sure that the <laughs> family friendly podcast would have. <laughs> Look, okay. Well, first of all, you're doing a wedding. It's going to have to be somewhat family friendly. You can't have any, uh, any, you know. Do you, give us your worst joke. I'm just, I just want to get a sense for this. 
like the worst one that may be okay, but probably shouldn't be said at a wedding. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, that one. Well, well, the best man told me he'd give me a hundred dollars if I slipped tongue punching a fart box in there. Wait, say it slower. <laughs> tongue punching a fart box. Got it. So I'll give you a hundred bucks if you can work that in too. <laughs> yeah, I mean that would be impressive. <laughs> Like, you know, sometimes if things get boring, don't be afraid to tongue punch her in the fart box type deal. Oh, my oh God. Jeez. You're actually going <laughs> to. Thank you, God this is not oh in the church. God. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going <laughs> to say this. I'm just going to say this. Your brother did this to himself. Okay. I now see why I yeah. didn't want you to be best man because he knew that something like that was going to come out. Yeah. It's like uh, he thought you would do too much damage as the best man for his best man speech. It turns out he can do just as much damage as the officiant. I mean, <laughs> seriously, at least people are drinking during the best man speech and have like a low bar. But for you, you're going to get them <laughs> sober and hot and bothered. And, uh, and then you're going to throw in a, a, a box. A, joke. A, yeah, that's a, tough. yeah. But a lingus joke. I mean, that's not what we're after. You know, it's going to be a tough yeah, wedding. He told me he said he said, I didn't know if I'd rather you have a microphone during the wedding or during the old uh, reception. But he thought I'd be more appropriate during the wedding. So he you was know, wrong. He knew he. he yeah, I've lived with this man for a while. And then when I was out of college, we lived together a little while. Like, he knows who I am, and he still chose this. So. I imagine I mean, the conversation between, like, there was a heated debate between him and his fiance of, like, we have to include him in the wedding. But, I mean, I think he could go really off the rails if he does the best man speech. Just make him an usher. Yeah. And he's like, well, no, he'll be offended by the usher. Okay. Uh, uh, what What is he not going to do a, a, a fart box He went joke. to seminary. Yeah. Oh, maybe we could make him the officiant. Yeah, he wouldn't dare say anything no. about about butt My stuff fart during box. the... the <laughs> <laughs> and then, lo and behold, here you are. <laughs> when is the wedding? When is the wedding? End of the month, July 29th. Okay, so this will come out after that. Yeah, this will come out after that. Yeah, right? come come out after. Out after that. So give us a couple more of your jokes. No one's going to be spoiled because this is coming out after the wedding. What other ones you got lined up? Well, that's, that's about as far as I got, which is why, like, he told me two, which means the I have to have more than The script is due two, tomorrow, is, my guy. Uh, yeah, what's going on? You can't delay the... Well, Go ahead. The the uh, the approval script is due tomorrow. Okay. The actual script, I still got three weeks on. Okay. Okay. He's a bit of a procrastinator. I see how seminary school didn't turn out so hot. Yeah. What do you do now? What's your yeah, job I'm, now? I'm a teacher. Oh, <laughs> what grade? Uh, I teach. I do K through eight uh. behaviors. <laughs> Is that is that where you learned uh, your joke? <laughs> uh, no, he's he's the inappropriate science I w- teacher. I wish the kids were that funny. He's the inappropriate science no, teacher. I, yeah, oh yeah, he is. I I can be professional, okay. Well, There's just a time and a place for professional. Yeah, well, okay, the then officiant. there you go. I, that's why the brother fell fine. He's like, he wouldn't do that on he, the official. He's, he's a teacher. teacher. Yeah. He, he molds the youth. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> well, this will, this will make your parents but, proud. Are you uh, married? No. Okay. But my you girlfriend be th- will be there. So. You got to be thinking about that. If you ever plan to get married... You're going to get some of this in return. However, he's going to retaliate equal or even worse at your wedding. So I would consider but the thing that. Is he's not funny or creative. <laughs> well, so include that in the officiant talk when yeah. you're up there. <laughs> Thank God that I'm the one up here talking because my brother is not funny nor creative would be a great way to <laughs> maybe start it off with. Do you still have any yeah, feelings his for man. his fiance? Oh, no, not at all. That was a quick five minute, apparently on the bus type. Oh, there's a cute girl. Let's ask her out. Okay, that's that's your political. 100% a shot you don't take. Yeah, that's your political answer. Yeah. Tell us how you really feel. Yeah, yeah. Do you you miss her? What's. uh... Yeah. No. No, if if she's if she wants my brother, more power to her. Okay. What if she 
Well, let's not go there. Yeah. We don't need to go there. No. No. We're gonna let that. We're oh gonna let goodness. that sleeping dog bake in the sun. Um, it's good job. Dogs get hot in the sun. No, no, I just, you know, what a reference. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Yeah. You ever see a dog sleep in the sun? They're like, ah, can I get out of here? You know, yeah. someone give I, me some water. Yeah. A lot of panting going. Yeah, on. Yeah, a lot of panting. They got yeah. that big Panting winter everywhere. coat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we wish you all the luck. I'll tell you that much. If you well, want, I appreciate you guys taking my call. Yeah, yeah. After this conversation, I'd maybe like a copy of that uh, wedding ceremony. Yeah, please. For send the us first it. time ever, I want to actually watch a wedding ceremony. <laughs> you know, they re- they record uh, wedding I'm, ceremonies and then no one ever watches it again. It's what this one I might actually want to tune into. I'd watch. I, also, keep in mind, not a lot of people are going to be super drunk at this point in the night, so that it's going to be hard to get jokes. You know, and that's not well, luckily like she's only got about four or five family members there. So like the majority of them will be my side of the family. So oh, they know how I am. They, they've then. grown up with me. So yeah, green light. Yeah, you what? got the go ahead. Yeah, I can see why you're being so ballsy. <laughs> um, and, uh, final yeah. final good move for you is when you're uh, scooting down the aisle to party in the USA, you could be handing out shooters to everyone. There you so go. They are a little liquored Ooh. up. Yeah, or just get there that's, early and put one move. under the seat. I mean, you you're, you went to seminary school, so you know when they uh, uh, do the blessing with the holy water and they like yeah shower yeah, yeah, yeah. down on everyone. And everyone does a sign of the cross. Yeah, you could just have fireball in yeah. there and just have everyone get a little <laughs> little taste. Yeah, you could shower everyone with fireball. And yeah, then people you, are rolling. You can roll down with pitball too. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, then, yeah, you oh, walk yeah. out to Pitbull Fireball. Then it, Fireball. Okay. Da, 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 da. Miles is a huge Pitbull fan. And then I'm just making it rain Fireball. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Also, also, I'm a little worried about this wedding because <laughs> it's going to take place in the Rocky Mountains. And it's on, like, a deck that's hit, literally hanging over a valley. And I'm a bigger man. I'm not the smallest guy you ever did meet. So I'm worried about the structural integrity. How would I go about uh, well, asking this venue to see their inspection? Well, the, th- the one, do that for sure ahead of time. Secondly, it's all about <laughs> weight distribution. So I used to work okay. concrete, and there's a lot of bracing and walking the top of the wall that you got to do. And as a bigger guy myself, mm-hmm. you want to make sure you got good weight distribution. That means do not stand with your feet too close together. You're going to want to spread those babies out. <laughs> uh, make sure you got a wide base because then it's not all the weight in one spot. Okay. Smart. Like like my offensive line stand. There yeah, you go. but maybe even a little wider than that. You know, I know you're, going, you're talking oh, shoulder okay. width. I'm talking outside those shoulders. Just to make sure that that weight distribution well, when, is good. When I got my suit tailored, they cinched a little off the sides of the pants to make it a little tighter. So if I bust a couple seams, I'll just say it's for safety reasons. Yeah, there you go. You got <laughs> that built-in excuse. Not because I gained too much weight. Yeah. Just bring a little fishing <laughs> line with you if worse comes to worse. Oh, true. I'll probably need that 30-pound braid, though. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, the braided. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. That'll keep you zipped in there if you something breaks. Well, thanks for calling in, yeah. fella. I appreciate you guys taking my call. Where are you guys drinking at today? Who's on third in Milwaukee? Oh, fun. Yeah. yeah I ever... need to get out to that area. Yeah. You guys, I hear you guys talk about North Dakota and Wisconsin and everything, so I'm trying to figure my way out that way we're going to the lake of the ozarks this weekend oh there you go it'll be a good time yeah you will have a good time there a little family vacay with the girlfriend's family so that will be interesting oh you have a girlfriend yeah he already said that well i know but you know it's something to keep in mind before the uh before the fart box joke comes in (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm just reminding. Sounds like I got two hundred dollars on the line, so yeah. I about got it at this point. I'm a teacher. I need that money. You DM me a video of you saying tongue punching a fart box at your brother's wedding. I will Venmo you a hundred bucks so fast. <laughs> just so you know, I'll be looking at you, betcha guy. Y o u b t c h a guy. 
You send me that video. Oh, yeah. I follow you on everything. Oh, Don't yeah. worry. You send me that video. I will, <laughs> with your Venmo name, I will sauce you 100 bucks immediately. <laughs> I'll throw in 50. All right, well, sounds good, yes. All right, sounds oh, oh, good, man. Even yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't <laughs> recommend you do it, but if you do it, I'll throw in 50. <laughs> sounds like a plan. All right, see you, my man. All right. Have oh, a good one. All right, see you. Thank you. This is going to be a disaster. Total disaster. Oh, my God. There's no way that this ends well at all. I don't think he's going to do it. I think he's more blustered. I think he's a lot of bark, no bite. Yeah, that's probably for the best. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I can't imagine that going well. It's such a hard crowd, too. Imagine if you were at this wedding and he said tongue punch and fart box. My, every single muscle in my body would be tense. Yeah, I would be. Everything I mean, would be flexing. There'd my, be sweat running down my back. I'd be like, this is what did every, he just say? Everybody's fart box is going to pucker if, that, yeah. you know, you would not be able to tongue punch my fart box. <laughs> he said that. I could tell no, you that the much. The defenses would be up. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, that concludes. Was I, that, think, I think that's. Oh, three. yeah. That's another well, episode. Time flies when you're talking about fart boxes, <laughs> Charlie, you know? Yes, it does, Miles. And <laughs> it's been another joy to, you know, uh, sit here with you and hear about scrap wood and. You know, people ruining their brother's uh, future marriage. I mean, there's a lot. Uh, it was. It was a good episode, yeah. Charlie. Um, and well, I, I want to thank uh, Who's on Third for hosting yeah, us. This is awesome. Great vibes in here. If you're ever in Milwaukee, you got to stop on in. And make sure you tip your bartender when you do. Absolutely. So we'll see you in the next one, guys. All right. Watch Love for you. deer. Bye-bye.